Thank you. Um, it's great to be here. I will give you a brief uh, overview of uh, clay hosted rate of deposits in Australia and discuss some uh, existing challenges and exploration considerations. As many of you know, uh, rare earth elements are in high demand, uh, which is expected to increase by seven times uh, by 2040. Clay hosted or ionic adsorption clay deposits are a valuable source of rare earths. They input in the total resources less than 4%, but they account for over 80% of the world heavy rare earth supplies. These deposits formed by weathering have many characteristics very attractive for mining. Elevated content of magnet and heavy rare earths, high tonnage mineralization, their lower grades, low operating costs due to near surface mining, low stripping ratio, no blasting required, quick and cheap uh, to define resources uh, by shallow air core drilling, uh, no crushing involved, uh, simple recovery techniques uh, using cheap ke chemicals at room temperature, and also importantly, there is low radioactivity. Um, the majority of uh, clay-hosted deposits are located in southeastern Asia. Over 200 mines are in the southern China and 100 in Myanmar adjacent to the China border. Only a few deposits are known around Africa and America, though two of them in Brazil are of a large scale. A number of deposits were recently discovered uh, around Australia, and uh, let's have a look at them in more detail. Um, in Australia, most of occurrences spread around western and southern parts of the country, clustering in the um, Esperance region and in the Yilgarn and Golic Cratons. Most of the deposits are hosted by granitoids and felsic volcanics with Kapamara in South Australia and deep leads in Tasmania, uh, developing over sedimentary rocks. Australian deposits, um, red circles here, are moderate and small in size. They are generally comparable in size with the Chinese mines, um, though grades are generally lower. Two large Brazilian deposits contain over one million ton of uh, rare earths each, uh, with caldera discovered last year being um, uh, highest in grades. Blanket style mineralization in residual regolith developing over granites is the most common type deposits around Australia. The Esperance region is the largest exploration hub at the moment, with an actively exploring area 250 kilometers long and 60 kilometers wide. The Newman deposit, uh, now Salazar project, um, found in 2011, was the first in Australia. All the other prospects uh, have been discovered for the last two years. Mineralization, they are developed in weathering crusts over proterozoic granites and gneisses. It's hosted by saprolite, uh, uh, clay zone, and saprock, forming continuous sub-horizontal blankets up to 20 meters thick. Uh, rare earths are mostly recoverable by strong acid leaching, indicating that metals occur in a colloidal form. Percentage of easily leachable rare earths is commonly low, less than 10%. Exploration for clay-hosted deposits in Australia is currently driven by grades. Uh, most of discoveries were made ex accidentally exploring for other commodities. This mineralization type, previously known as only found in China, is relatively new to Australian in industry. Um, existing exploration models and knowledge base are still at the development stage. There is a steep learning curve for geologists starting new projects here. Um, a lot of unknowns, lots to learn about the mineralization formation, critical controls, and the best exploration approaches uh, to take. Although a mineral system looks relatively simple, there are lots of issues to consider in the targeting process. The system is generally the interplay between geological settings uh, and magmatic evolution on one side, 
and wedding processes um, on one, another side. A two-pronged uh, targeting approach is required, chasing both fertile source bedrock and kaolinite-rich residual regolith. And talking about grades, um, average crustal abundance of uh, total rare earth oxides is around 200 ppm. And only moderate five-fold enrichment is required to upgrade background values to the economic 1,000 ppm level. This is much less gradient compared to many other metals. Uh, for example, 300 times enrichment is required uh, to upgrade gold background abundances to 1 ppm level. So this means uh, that rare earths are not that rare. So why we have not too many deposits around Australia? Apart from uh, weathering-related issues, grades are greatly affected by recovery problems. Um, only easily leachable, uh, leachable part of mineralization should be considered because traditional cheap processing by ionic solutions only extracts this part. Most of the Chinese deposits and caldera in Brazil and Tantalus in Madagascar uh, show recoveries above 60% benchmark. In a comparison, most of Australian deposits and prospects are low in the easily leachable component, except the deep leads in Tasmania with 40% recovery. Presence of adsorbed um, rare earths is the best case scenario as uh, requires um, low acid consumption and subsequently is relatively cheap. Dealing with stronger bound uh, Forms of rare earths, colloidal, mostly locked in iron oxides or refractory minerals, requires more aggressive leach conditions and more expensive. With stronger acids, which is reflected by decreasing pH on this uh, graph, uh, cost of chemicals alone uh, can get higher than product revenue. The recovery of metals is often a decisive uh, factor for further project development. Standard leaching recovery tests are relatively simple. Their completion is strongly recommended at very early stages of exploration to ensure viability of the project. So which host, uh, host rocks uh, are most prospective for clay-hosted deposits? They are mostly formed of granites, felsic volcanics, and alkaline felsic intermediate rocks. There are no size, geometry, or age constraints reported on the fertile granite uh, in intrusions elsewhere. Muscovite and Muscovite biotite granites are considered to be the most prospective. Deposits are commonly developed in the marginal parts of intrusions and on the late stages of granite emplacement. Fractional crystallization and magma differentiation are the key processes uh, for concentrating rare earths in alkaline igneous rocks. Late stage hydrothermal and automated somatic processes are essential for conversion of resistant rare earth minerals into the weatherable species. Um, the second key component of the mineral system is the weathering uh, process, uh, greatly affecting enrichment um, partial remobilization and rare earth fractionation in the weathering profile. Clay regolith rich in kaolinite and holocyte is the critical part of the mineral system. Smectites appear to bind uh, rare earths too strongly, preventing their recovery using dilute electrolyte solutions. Same applies to iron oxides. This is thought to be the main reason why mafic rocks commonly weathered to smectites and iron oxides are not very prospective for ionic adsorption type mineralization. Subtropical to tropical climates with moderate to high precipitation and temperatures favor, uh, favor chemical weathering to the clay zone formation. And low to moderate denudation rates ensure the preservation of thick regolith profiles. The majority of economic deposits are developed over pyroluminous to metaluminous uh, granitic uh, plutons. Uh, most enriched granites belong to high potassium, uh, calc alkaline, to shoshanitic series. So highly siliceous, over 70% silica rock compositions, medium to high sodium and potassium, 
and lower calcium, lower levels of phosphorus, titanium, and iron, which could uh, bind rare earths into immobile secondary phases. Um, and their rare earth signature of uh, the protoleaf uh, generally controls the rare, rare earth distribution in the subsequent weathered mineralization. Mobilization of rare earths in the weathering zone is mainly controlled by the presence of mineral hosts uh, susceptible to dissolution in acidic uh, groundwaters. Zircon, xenotime, and monazite, most common minerals in hard rock deposits, are resistant to weathering and retain in the, in the regolith. Uh, fluorocarbonites, uh, gadolinite, alanite, and some other species are relatively mobile, releasing rare earths into supergen fluids, and uh, they actually uh, potential uh, minerals uh, to form uh, clay-hosted deposits. Special attention uh, needs to be paid to heavy rare earths. Apart from magnet type uh, terbium and dysprosium, there are also very high, highly prized uh, lutetium and holmium in this group. The formation of uh, this type deposits, um, hydrothermal uh, overprinting on the later stage of granite crystallization is essential. As it commonly upgrades the mineralization by the heavy rare earth rich fluids. Albite rich muscovite or two mica alkaline granites are most prospective for heavy rare earths. Parent uh, granites are highly siliceous, over 75% silica, um, alkaline and high in fluorine. Uh, they are also depleted in iron in magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus. The heavy rare signature of the bedrock source is commonly not changed uh, by weathering processes and inherited uh, by the clay-hosted mineralization. And uh, to summarize, um, successful exploration for the clay-hosted rare earth de deposits uh, requires a good understanding of both uh, fertile bedrock source and weathering evolution. The presence, uh, presence of easily weatherable rare earth minerals in the source rocks is thought to be the primary control of the desirable ionic adsorption type deposits. And bedrock analysis uh, to be focused on late stage hydrothermally altered parts of granite and alkaline intrusions a number of chemical and mineralogical constraints to be applied to identify the most prospective ground. Exploration to be prioritized to the heavy rare earth enriched mineralization type. And uh, regular studies supported by geophysical data in INTERP uh, to be used uh, for identification of continuous blankets of residual clay regolith. Um, so I think um, Australia has a great potential for discovery of substantial mineral resources of the clay-hosted rare, uh, rare earth mineralization in the near future. Thank you.